Sitting in my Durban storeroom with over a thousand kilograms of glass beads crammed to the rafters and jammed into boxes, I ask, what do you want to become? And the material does speak to me. It wants to be itself. Do as little as possible, it says. Lay me out in a single file. Weave me together in a single stitch. Balance me on my tips. Go on like that for miles. When I first traveled from LA to South Africa in 2005, I had been working with beads as an art material for 16 years. My idea was to create a sculpture with bead workers from the townships of KwaZulu-Natal. It would be a way to complete a major project and at the same time help to build a solid economic entity over a period of three months with previously unemployed women. It was a question. It was an art experiment. I've rented an old dance hall on the docks. Broken windows are held together with duct tape. Birds fly through the open rafters. Rain drips down onto the metal roof in steady staccato. Fifteen women, some carrying umbrellas, some with plastic bags over their heads, clump into the room. They wipe the plastic chairs before taking a seat. And after they settle in, I tell them that I will be teaching them how to work with beads in my method. It's different, I say. We'll be gluing the beads, not sewing. And then I point to the chain link fence standing in the middle of the room. We will be covering this with beads. Ivo, the women laugh. I get out the beads and the glue and I demonstrate. Someone from the group, Wushle, I later learn, comes forward and tries it out. And then she explains to everyone in Zulu. We all kick up our shoes and we sit down to work. At first, the room is quiet, but after a while, the women seem to have the general hang of it and the conversation starts to flow. They're speaking in Isi Zulu, and I have no idea what they are saying, but from their smiles and laughter, I can see that everyone's having a wonderful time. I smile and grin, but between bubbling pops and clicks of Isi Zulu, bits of English start to blurt out, and I begin to get the gist of what the women are saying. My skirt, cut at an angle, has a rope tied at the end of it. Someone wants to know if I'll be dropping anchor. Laughter. <laughs> Tears stream down cheeks, high fives, seems as if someone doesn't have a maid, I hear one of them crack, or an iron. My shoes, another source of hilarity, trainers with a skirt, thigh slapping, guffaws even, but when our skin touches to pass beads or a pair of scissors, they flinch. I've shipped a chain link fence enclosure in crates that are probably sturdier than most of their homes, and they're wondering whether I couldn't have made it here in South Africa which is surrounded, characterized even by its prolific use of razor wire fencing. Well, no, I could not because it was made to exact specifications in a process that took months to fabricate. But I can't really explain this sort of art folly, not in real world terms. So we are sitting in mutual incomprehension, wrapping beads around a fence. I'm happy that the ladies don't hem and haw or kowtow or truckle, but am I really such a joke as this? It's so funny, I want to weep. But there is the occasional crack that breaks through all the mirth, and it gives me insight into what might really be going on. I hear Fagile say to the others, how will this girl be able to pay us? And I can't help but wonder how it is that anyone is even smiling. The team wake up at 4 a.m., washing buckets of water drawn from a spigot down the road, feed their children, iron their clothes with paraffin heat, and then tick along dirt roads to get into the taxis to work. We pay the fares for the team to make the minibuses from their townships and rural areas into the studio. The taxis are painted with slogans like, doing it doggy style, and treat them like we need them and never give them freedom, and don't jump if you can't grind. House music is played at deafening volume, though it is possible to wait and catch a Jesus taxi, which will have slogans like, when down to nothing, Jesus is up to something, and they'll play gospel music at deafening volume. 
taxis, which comfortably seat 15, are often crowded with over 25 people. Brown flesh presses against the windows like rolls of bread. Hear the loud music, see the resigned faces. When the light turns, smell the burning rubber. There are often fatal accidents. See them along the road, bodies lying peacefully as though sleeping. The team walk another umpteen blocks to get into the studio. Giantesses with heads held high, hair intact, everything pressed and perfect and matching. And when they arrive at work, they throw off their shoes, put on slippers, or just go barefoot. I look at the mash pile, stilettos mostly, and I know with absolute certainty that I could never walk a mile in their shoes. <laughs> at lunchtime, Duduzile chases Zanelle around the room and then plops her down on top of her. Nonchantla teases everyone by pinching their bums and lifting them off their feet. Bouchle grabs her breasts and jiggles them up and down like bells. Tanda, a kitten-like beauty, eats an entire loaf of white bread, six pieces at a time, slathered in margarine, and washes it down with a liter of coke. She kills it, Stilile says. Watching this scene with the ripe, juicy women, I look down. My toes poking out of flip-flops look like pink crabs, skin so pale as though I forgot to put on a layer of clothing. My desire to help the poor looks at me and has a good belly laugh. I'm in the corner gnawing on roots and raw vegetables while the women we are making and the, while the work we are making and the women I am making it with become ever more lustrous. I feel flattened by what the color of my skin represents. I dislike being the white lady in charge. My do-gooderism is starting to feel like naive hubris. Why did I think I could make any kind of difference? I look over at Zanelle and Tanda bent at their task, heaving with laughter, telling jokes. They care not a jot that I'm white or about South African history. All that matters to them right now is that they're going to get paid well and treated fairly. So get on with it. Dare nothing. Do nothing. Change nothing. Do your work. <laughs>